Jesus said, some things that I don't understand some things I can't come to grip with sometimes I just look out in the world and think why why me God why this situation why them Lord why this tribulation why I've been down on my luck for a while I mean I don't even have an ace in the deck. Just empty hands with no patience that's left. I'm lost in the desert, no oasis. I guess I'm hung out to dry. Lips chapped, feet hurt in this weather. I thirst and I march on, hoping to find an answer. Just an inkling of faith in this world full of cancer would be a refreshing drip of water on the tip of my tongue. The fresh, cool breeze of Jehovah's lungs is exactly what I need. I feel so far away. I mean, God, are you really with me? Do you really care? When I cry in distress, are you really there? Your word says yes, but sometimes I doubt it. But clearly my own path needs rerouting because every time I walk my own way, I get lost. And even though I'm lost in the desert, I now realize he created it. He knows where the water is. He made the sun. His creation is marvelous and he is in control even when I fail. He is faithful even when I fall. He is what I need even when I doubt. He is fresh water in the midst of the drought. He is God and he is king. He is Lord and gives life to all things. He and takes away and sometimes I just need to trust that he knows exactly what he is doing. When I am asleep, he is moving. When I fall, he is choosing to pick me back up with outstretched arms. Nothing that anyone does can separate me from his love because he is faithful. He is true. He is good. He is God. And in the desert, I Welcome to Sligo Church. live or you found us online we thank you for being a part of our worship today
family, what a delight it is to be in the house of God. And wasn't it a delight, the quotes we just saw in the video, our bodies may age, but our faith is everlasting. Amen to that. And you know what else is everlasting? The arms of our creator. And it is also a delight when we trust God with our lives because we can live a life secure and safe from all alarms. Why don't you grab your hymnal or pull out your phone and let's sing together our song of gathering, hymn number 469, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms of God. our house to your house and anywhere in between. Welcome to Sligo Church Live. Online and mobile at sligochurch.com. Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Matthew 19, 14. Good morning and welcome to Sligo Live. I'm Pastor Hazel Marroquin, and I'm extremely excited that today we have a very special guest with us. We have Sherry Urig, who is the director for children's ministry for the North American division, the NAD. Welcome, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And I do want to give this shout out to all the boys and girls that joined Heroes VBS and all the parents that were there. You are definitely a hero. Thank you, Sherry. We're so excited. Now, I can remember clearly in January, uh, under your leadership, we had a convention for the children's pastor and the children's leaders from all around, around the North American division. And uh, they actually did the vacation Bible school heroes there, but never did y'all imagine that it would have to transpire and become virtual. Never did. You are so correct. We never saw that coming down the road. <laughs> oh. Now, uh, tell me, uh, how was the idea born uh, to just go ahead and transition? And, and how did it, like, how did it work? You had a good team, yeah. I saw. 
Uh, yes, we had a beautiful team all from all over North America, but I do believe that the conversation started as a God-ordained conversation. And it started with one of our um, children's ministry directors from the Texas conference. We were just talking about doing VBS training online. We weren't talking about doing the whole VBS online. <laughs> and we just started knocking around ideas so that more people could be trained in vacation Bible school. And, the, and it was mentioned, you know, wow, wouldn't it be so cool if we could do a vacation Bible school from the NAD and involve all of North America? That, that's a, that was the border we put around, all of North America. <laughs> yes, wow. But little, little did you know that border know. was going to expand. I, that's right. Boy, did it ever expand. Hazel, and I know that you've gotten the numbers too. It was well over 10,000 registrations. And um, it was just totally amazing. People from all over the world joined in with us on that. That's fantastic. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret. One of my favorite parts of the VBS uh, program for the week was the evening program uh, where the, the families and children were chatting and they were putting in the different countries and states that they were from. And I couldn't believe how many people were from just all over the world. That was exciting. I know. It was, uh, I was watching the chat go, it was almost like popcorn. It was going so yes, it was, and trying to write, it write it down as quick. <laughs> we had kids from all over and they must have had to, I mean, they were truly VBS uh, warriors for us because they either had to stay up very, very late at night or get up really, really early to join us. And so that was, that was amazing. That's true because of the time time zone, the, the different yes. changes. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So we would just give a huge, on behalf of Sligo Church, a huge shout out to you, Pastor Jerry, uh, all of your volunteers and everybody that came together to bring this amazing presentation with us. So what we did uh, in particular for the Sligo Church, because uh, we knew that it was going to be very difficult for our children to find each other in the midst of 10,000 children. It's almost like being at Oshkosh, right? right? So what we did was God put in our hearts and we created a, a VBS Zoom after party for our Sligo children. And so last Sabbath, we had uh, this virtual uh, party and we had so much fun. We played uh, the Lai Lai song, Lai Lai Lai, the theme song. And I think uh, us adults might have enjoyed it a little bit more than the children. But the yeah. children were so excited. You can see them on the screen. And we even got to meet a brand new baby brother. Uh, so we, and we want to introduce him in our video. His name is Joash David Joshua. He's nine weeks old. And we want to introduce uh, Joash to our Sligo Church family. So we have a video that we put together with uh, a, a little bit about our after party. And we had a grand prize winner. And uh, we have uh, a couple of our children saying how much they enjoyed it as well. So let's watch this video. Okay.
Did you like that, Cherry? That was so precious. And you know, that is our youngest little hero. Maybe he's the first baby born uh, during Vacation Bible School, right before Vacation Bible School. <laughs> yes, that's right. And so, uh, Sherry, because we have you here, I want to transition into something maybe a little bit more serious. Uh, VBS was fantastic, fun, and we, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for making this uh, 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 available for us. Uh, now, right now, during the COVID times, um, mm -hmm. is there anything that your department is doing to help our, our, our families, our children? Yes, there is. And we, you know, we uh, take this so seriously, what's going on with not only our, in our families, because this is a hard time really really hard time and so uh, we collaborated with the, the North American Division Family Ministry Department with Dr. Pam and Claudio Consuegra and created what we call our family room it's a 15 minute segment and it happens every other week and you should just go online and watch it not only do we have something for the parents for the first seven minutes just to address some of the issues that they're facing right now, right now in their homes. And then the last seven minutes, then we uh, address the children and have either a special activity or, or we talk about things that are, are uh, happening in, for them in their hearts and, and what's happening in their, what they're thinking about. And plus for the uh, Sligo family, we do have a special peek from um, Carlito, he comes on and does a little segment for us too. And so that is always, always so much fun. That sounds really uh, uh, amazing. Can you tell me where we can find that? Yes, thank you for asking. I should have said that earlier. No, but, no, uh, you can either find it on the childmen.org website or the family in ministries NAD website, as well as those Facebook pages. And on the website, yeah, you will find where to download the activities and the handouts that for each segment. That sounds really, really uh, like a, a good deal. And so uh, what I'm guessing is because you do it on Facebook, uh, the parents and families can go to the previous ones that that's you've already right. done to, to obtain that information, right? They sure can. In fact, that's where we find most of our traffic is after, after we've recorded, even though we record it live, it's after words and it might be uh, because of the scheduling you know the time for families is better at a different time so yes they sure can and that last week we talked about family friendship how to have how to be friends with with the people in your family <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <That's important. laughs> it is. Uh, and we know I read an article uh, not too long ago that uh, it was really kind of concerning because uh, it, it, it was talking about how a lot of families are not used to spending so much time together and how it's causing a little bit of friction. And yes. so it sounds like a lot of us could probably go and watch that video and benefit <laughs> from it. Yes. Yeah. It, yes, it is very good. It's very short, so it's not going to take much of your time. So, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you for you uh, yeah. to you and the uh, family ministry that uh, are working together, because I think that's going to be really important. That, and that could be very beneficial for our families. Uh, so tell me, is there anything, uh, any uh, projects or anything that the children's ministry department is working on that you want to let us know? Sure, there sure is. And thank you again for letting me talk about this because I could d definitely talk all day. Yes. <laughs> we do have a project coming up and I just wanted to say that every project that we do falls under our slogan, I guess is what you could call it, which is hashtag say yes to Jesus. Mm. So we want to give every, every opportunity we can to our children to, to say yes to Jesus. And uh, what we've been working on, which will roll out in January, is a, um, a curriculum or almost like a vacation Bible school, but not really, because it's a children's evangelistic series called Operation Search and Rescue. Mm. And going over the 28 fundamental beliefs in a very fun and relevant way. And, it, and there's a storyline that just kind of weaves through it all. With, um, with this big osprey type airplane and, and the, the people are going out to find somebody that they need to rescue. Yeah. And so it's really, it's really a lot of fun. 
a lot it's of fun. Down, it that sounds fun. Out in January. That's in January. Wow. You heard it first here at Sligo Live. That's right. <laughs> yeah, thank you for, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that and uh, to incorporate it in our evangelism for the children. So thank you so much. Sherry, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts uh, for, uh, for taking time to spend with us for uh, telling us what's happening in our children's uh, ministry department. We know that uh, Jesus highly valued children. Of course, we value children. They're a huge part of our That's of right. our family. And uh, I have two boys and I always wanted to have a girl. I never did. And so now I have many little girls That's that, right. you sure do. that I consider my children. <laughs> and so uh, I, we're always looking for uh, good resources and we're thankful right. that uh, you and your department are working on that for us. And uh, so thank you for being here. Well, thank you for inviting me. It was a, it was an honor to be here. Thank you. And so uh, we want to tell uh, you who are listening to us uh, once again, if there's a need that you have, uh, please reach out to us at sligochurch.org. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, sligochurch.org. Let us hear from you. And now we transition back to our sanctuary uh, where Pastor Tapp will be sharing today's message entitled Divorce by God. Uh, that sounds like an interesting topic, so we look forward to, to that message. So we'll see you next week, and God bless you. Good morning, Sligo family. It is always a wonderful um, experience to be able to connect together for our worship service today. You know, this summer has hit. Summer, at least here in Maryland, is here. We are feeling the heat. We are feeling the uh, weather. We are feeling the, the uh, sweat coming down our cheek when we're outside. But you know what? For me, I'm okay with that. I'd rather have that than have to be in a bunch of coats and sweaters and be cold. But the, the beautiful thing about it is that when you go outside, you see the flowers, you see the trees, you see the, the color that uh, summer um, brings or summer has, and it's wonderful and it's lovely. When we as a family, as a Sligo family, as a Christian family, worship together as well, we make up a beautiful, wonderful, colorful uh, uh, family that, that worships with God and praises our God. We are so happy that you have decided to connect with us online, to be here with us online, to uh, partake of this wonderful worship service. We pray and we hope that you continue to connect with us. We want to welcome you every single Sabbath that we're together. We welcome you and we are grateful that you are here, well, not here, but that you are connected with us during this time. Uh, and we have some wonderful activities and things that are going on that, uh, and a couple of them you can participate up live, and many of them you can participate as you connect with us. I want to let you know a couple of things that are going to happen. Um, next Sabbath, okay, make sure you write this on your calendars because we are going to need uh, you to participate in this. Next Sabbath, we are having a grab-and-go food distribution here at Sligo at 1 p.m. And this will be in the parking lot uh, at the corner of Carroll Avenue and Flower Avenue. So if you want to participate in this, we invite you to be part of it. Don't forget, grab and go next Sabbath, 1 o'clock. Hopefully you can join us for that as well. But we also want to make sure that uh, you join us today. And I hope that it's already in your calendars. Emails have been sent uh, in regards to this. It's the Sligo Meet and Greet, and it's this afternoon at 4 o'clock. I am a very, uh, how do you say that? I, I'm a very social individual. I like to see people. I, I like to, to be with people. So this, if you are like me, this is going to be a wonderful way to just connect 
um, with uh, our church family online. So if you haven't received your Zoom invitation yet, you can write to Pastor McFarlane at his email at dmcfarlane at sligochurch.org so that you can get then the Zoom invitation to be part of this. Don't forget, Sligo meet and greet this afternoon at 4 o'clock. I don't know if, uh, if, uh, how many of you have enjoyed uh, this a series that has been going on during the evenings. I, am, I certainly have. The series is called When Hope Hurts, an online series with Pastor Cheryl Wilson Bridges every night at 7 p.m. from Monday to Saturday uh, is this wonderful series. Now, we want to let you know that this Wednesday, instead of having prayer gathering, we want you to join us with the wonderful topic that Pastor Cheryl Bridges will have. So we hope that you connect with us, and we hope that you tell a friend. It's as easy as telling them, connect online and join and watch this wonderful series that will bring uh, wonderful hope during this difficult time. We're also a very uh, uh, close family, right? I know that we have individuals that not only watch us from this area here in Maryland, but also abroad. We understand that we have Sligo family that watches us from across the ocean, from across different oceans. So we are so happy that our family has extended globally, and we hope that we know that we're all a family together. And so knowing that, we we come to you and we ask that you keep uh, uh, family members in your prayers. We want to ask for prayers of families of, of these dece deceased, uh, for Rex Constantino, Claret Elizabeth, John, and Paul Copis. For those families, we want you to pray for them that the Lord may continue to give them comfort. Also, we have... Uh, family members who need prayer for healing. And we want to ask for healing for Norman Martin, uh, Rachel Mark, uh, Judy uh, Coding, and Barry Pert. We want to ask you to please keep them in your prayers. Once again, we are so thankful that you have connected with us today. We will continue our worship service uh, after this prayer. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, you are an awesome God. We pray that this service today may be a service where we can all come together online, praise you, and worship you. May all we do be for your honor and your glory. We ask you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We serve an immortal, invisible God who is supreme and wise above all. Join me as we extol his name with our hymn of praise, hymn number 21, Immortal, Invisible God, Only Wise.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you with a heart of gratitude, and we want to thank you for everything you have done and everything you continue to do for us. Thank you for this Sabbath day and this opportunity to serve and worship you. I thank you for providing us with the resources to be able to broadcast this service for those at home watching around the world. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins and saving us from the eternal death that we deserve. I pray you forgive us of our sins and renew our hearts and minds to continue to be more aligned with your character of love. I pray you be with all of us now, Lord, and guide us during this unprecedented time in our lives. I ask that you continually remind us that you are all powerful and always in control. Thus, we should not fear because we know our faithful Father will rescue us. I pray for those that are in need of healing, whether it be mentally, physically, or spiritually. I pray for those that are struggling financially, Lord, and that you can provide for them just as you said you would. I pray you provide wisdom to our leaders and those in power so they may make wise decisions and that your will may be done. Finally, I ask that you be with Pastor Tapp as he preaches your word. I ask that you speak through him and use him to convey what you want us to know. I ask that the Holy Spirit may dwell upon us so that we may all understand the message that is spoken. May your presence always be with us. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the children's message today. With me is my good friend, Carlito. Carlito, how are you? Carlito, how are you? I'm a little sad. Oh, you're a little sad. What's going on? I miss my friends. You miss your friends? Yes, I haven't seen Sir for Tim. He's in his own box, and I'm in my own box. Oh, I see, I see. Um, and so you miss him, yes? And my and my cousin, um, Carly, as well. I can't see her. Oh, I see. And so you're you're feeling sad? Yes, I'm not feeling with a lot of energy because I'm sad. Oh, okay. Can I sing a sad song? No, no, no. I, I don't want you to sing a sad song. I want you to sing a happy song. But I'm sad. I know. And and what? And so um. So that makes you sad, huh? Yes, yes, but you know what? Um, I, I know that, 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 that I want to see them. Yes, I know. And you know, there's a lot of boys and girls um, that are also feeling sad. Really? Yes, they're, they're feeling sad, and at the same time, they're probably feeling scared. I'm a little scared. Yes, I know. And, you know, they're probably, some of them are probably feeling happy as well. Oh, I like when, when kids feel happy. Yes, I know. Surfer Tim seemed to always be happy. He's like, dude, you're happy, dude. Yes, I, wow, that was an interesting voice that you did of, of, of Surfer Tim. He said, do that. How are you do that? Okay, I don't think he speaks like that, but you, you were close. I know. hee <laughs> hee. So, um, you know, but I have, I have some good, good news for you that, that's going to make you happy. Oh, I, I want to hear what is it. Well, you know that no matter how you're feeling, no matter what's going on, even if you're sad, if you're happy, if you're scared, if you're upset, no matter how you're feeling like that, you know that God is always with you. What? Like, like he's with me? Yes, God is always with us, no matter how we feel. He's not only with us when we're happy. Oh, really? Yeah, he's not only with us then. He's with us when we are all so sad. We can always turn to him. But how can I do that? I don't understand. What do you mean? Well, listen, you know, one, one of the things that I like to do, for instance, when I'm sad or when I'm not feeling that good or even when I'm happy, um, I always like to just get on my knees and talk with him. Oh, really? Yeah, it's called prayer. I like to have prayer and just talk with him and let him know that I, how I'm feeling. Let him know that I'm sad. Let him know 
that, that I'm upset or that I'm scared. Oh, I like that. I like to do that. Can we do that together? Yes, of course, Carlito. We can always do that together. And so, you know, when I, when I do that and I talk to him, I know that he's right there with me. Oh, oh, can I sing a song now? I'm feeling happy. Can I sing a happy song? Okay, what do you want to sing? I love it that Jesus is with me, that God is with me always. Wow, Carlito, that was really good. Um, you're becoming quite the singer. Oh, I, I go to puppet singing school. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, very well. Boys and girls, just remember this. No matter how you're feeling, no matter what's going on, just know that God is there with you all the time because God loves you and he loves me and he loves all of us. God loves me, God loves you, God loves everybody. Very good, Carlito. I like that. So boys and girls, remember that. And when you're feeling sad or you're feeling any, any way, make sure you let your mom and your daddy know and just say a prayer. Or, or you know what I like to do as well? What? I like to go into God's Word and find all these verses of promises. So make sure you talk to your parents. Let them know how you're feeling. Say a prayer. Have them show you Bible texts that talk about God's wonderful promises and how God is always with us no matter how you feel. Carlito, let's say a prayer. Are you ready to say a prayer? Yes, I'm ready to say a prayer. Can, okay, let, let's pray. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to pray. So put your hands together. All boys and girls, put your hands together, bow your heads, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we are so grateful that no matter how we feel, you are always with us. God, we love you, and we know that you love us as well. We ask you in Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Bye. Sabbath. Our scripture reading for today is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 50 verses 1 to 3. I will be reading from the New King James Version. You may follow along as I read by looking at the screen or by looking into your Bible at home. So again, that is the book of Isaiah chapter 50 verses 1 to 3. Thus says the Lord, where is the certificate of your mother's divorce whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? For your inequities you have sold yourselves, and for your transgressions your mother has been put away. Why, when I came, was there no man? Why, when I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened to all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Indeed, with my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stink because there is no water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their covering. May the Lord add a blessing to his word. I'm so confused I know I heard you loud and clear So I followed through Somehow I ended up here I don't want to think that I may never understand That my broken heart is a part of your plan When I try to pray, all I got is hurt And these four words I know you're good, but this 
just don't feel good right now And I know you think Of things I could never think about It's hard to count on all joy Distracted by the noise Just trying to make sense Of all your promises Sometimes I gotta stop Remember that you're God and I am not so Thy will be done Thy will be done Thy will be done Like a child on my knees All that comes to me is Thy will be done thy Thank you, Brianna, for that beautiful music. More than music, it was a prayer that we all can pray today. Despite what we're going through, we can say the words that Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane as he was headed toward the cross. Thy will be done. Amen, family. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We are so happy to have you here today with us even though it's virtually, whether you're in Alaska, Atlanta, or Alabama, wherever you are around the globe, you have the opportunity to be with us today in worship, and we do not take your presence for granted. So turn to the person next to you and your family and just give them a hug, give them a handshake, tell them happy Sabbath, and we're happy to have you here with us today. If you're Zooming us down the street on your car, just wave at somebody. They have no idea why you're waving, but that's all right. For those of you who may have just joined us in the last couple of minutes, we want to remind you that this Sabbath afternoon at 4 p.m., we're going to have our virtual Sligo Connect meet and greet. During COVID, it's been four months now. We haven't had the opportunity to come together and, and see one another face to face. But this afternoon at 4 o'clock, we're going to have an opportunity to do just that virtually. So you should have gotten the email on Friday, yesterday. You should have gotten it on Sunday. If for some reason you didn't get it, just email one of the pastors. Let us know, and we'll make sure we forward that to you. Also, as Pastor Jerry mentioned, and, and he's not a pastor on staff here. Some of you may be asking that. He's with the NAD, but he's still a member. And as we always say, once a member of Sligo, what? Always a member of Sligo. Plus, we want Carlito to come back as well. But this afternoon, next Sabbath, I'm sorry, at uh, what time? One o'clock, I believe it is. 
We're going to have a grab and go again. We're going to be giving out thousands of pounds of food to our community. We don't want you to just show up to help, but you need to register with Pastor McFarland. So just go online at sligochurch.org, get his email address there, reach out to him, and let him know I want to be a volunteer for that. And August 1, it's homecoming. Even though it's going to be a virtual homecoming, it's still going to be good. We're still going to have the flags, believe it or not. We want you to take a picture of you and your family and the flag of the, that represents the country that you're from and even your traditional garb, if you have it. Take it and send it to us here at Sligo Church, and we would love to take that and be able to show it. That's going to be our parade of nations for the day. If you'd like more information about that, just go to sligochurch.org and click on the icon that says Homecoming. But this morning, I want us to take an opportunity to go to God's Word as we prepare a message that I've simply entitled, and this is not a mistake, Divorced by God. I invite you to bow your heads today as we pray. Father God, we thank you for the blessings of this week. We thank you for having brought us safely through yet another week. And Lord, even though there's a lot of hurt in our land today, there's a lot of pain in our hearts, we want to be able to say, thy will be done. For your will is always the best way for our lives. And that's what we desire. So strengthen our faith as we continue to deal with the challenges that we're facing each and every day of our lives. And now, Father, as we pause to hear a word from you, as always, we ask that you open our hearts, that you clear our minds of all the clutter that has accumulated over this past week, and that you grant us the understanding that is needed. And Father, may every individual under the sound of my voice today receive the blessing that each of us stands so desperately in need of in spite of this flawed, defective vessel you have chosen to use. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Divorced by God. Recently, I came across some statistics that I thought were quite interesting. You know, many of us have heard over the years that the divorce rate within the United States is around 50%. Now, although that may have been the case at one time, that may have been true, but currently, the divorce rate in our country is much less than that. Now, it's not because of why you might think that couples have simply decided to, to hang in there and to push through, although that may be part of it. But the primary reason is because, and I thought this was interesting, fewer millennials today are actually getting married. Millennials, also known as Generation Y or Gen Y, are those who were born in the early 1980s up until 1996. And according to a recent report by the Pew Research Center, a nonpartisan fact tank that informs the public about issues, attitudes, and trends that are shaping our world today, they say that 25% of all millennials are likely never to be married. And the reasons are too many to mention today. But what is clear is this, that this would then be the highest percentage in modern history. But regardless of the reasons for the decline in the divorce rate in the United States, just the idea of divorce, as well as the act itself, can be an extremely traumatic experience for both individuals, regardless of the reason for the split. In fact, divorce can be so traumatic at times that it can create mental scars 
which can be so far-reaching that the symptoms can often present themselves as those associated with PSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And this can become increasingly stressful if there happen to be children involved. But divorce is not a new construct of our times. Rather, divorce has been around since the institution of marriage itself. In Scripture, we find the first mention of divorce within the Torah, the first five books of Moses and the books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. But this morning, I've chosen a passage from Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 to 4, that I want us to take a moment to reflect upon. So turn with me. Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 to 4, reading from the New International Version. Look at what it says. If a man marries a woman who becomes displeasing, underline that word displeasing to him, because he finds something indecent about her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her, and sends her from his house. And after she leaves his house, she becomes the wife of another man. And her second husband dislikes her and writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her, and sends her from his house. Or if he dies, look at verse 4 here. Then the first husband who divorced her is not allowed to marry her again after she has been defiled. That will be detestable, he says, in the eyes of the Lord. Do not bring sin upon the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. Now, in order to really gain an understanding of the concept of divorce in the Hebrew culture, you first have to have a pretty good grasp of the, the institution of marriage in this culture as well. You see, marriage among the Hebrews, as among many other of the Orientals, was more of a legal contract than a byproduct of love. Now, that is not to say that these individuals didn't eventually love one another. Nevertheless, primarily, marriage in that culture was a contract, one which benefited the man, the husband, more than it did the woman, the wife. You see, the husband or his family had to pay a dowry, had to pay money or goods or estate to the betrothed parents before the marriage was officially consummated. Then, because this was the case, the wife could easily be seen or regarded as being property which without much difficulty, could easily dispose of her by the husband for a whole slew of reasons. As it said in Deuteronomy 24, he could simply find her displeasing. And if he gave her away, then he would forfeit the dowry that he paid to the family. Now, though the wife was powerless because she could not divorce her husband, if she wanted to get out of the marriage, she could make herself increasingly unmanageable to the point that he would want to divorce her and give her away. Even Jesus briefly mentions divorce in the New Testament, although in doing so he adds stricter guidelines than those than we see here in the Torah. But as I mentioned earlier, regardless of the reasons for divorce, it can be a physically and emotionally debilitating experience. But as emotionally challenging as a divorce can be, what about when it comes to being divorced not by one spouse, but how difficult, how challenging it can be when you find yourself being divorced by God himself. This is what appears to be taking place in the scripture that was read earlier in our service. For those of you who were not here, I want us to take a moment to read it again. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 50 as we look at verses 1 to 3. But I want to take these verses individually today. So I want at this point just to read verse 1. We'll come back to verses 2 and verse 3 a little later on. Look at verse 1. Look at what it says. Thus says the Lord, where is the certificate of your mother's divorce? Mother here being Israel, 
whom I have put away, or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? For your iniquities you have sold yourselves, and for your transgressions your mother has been put away. The prophet Isaiah here, who was the son of Amaz, to which the book is named, was a prophet during one of the most turbulent times in Judah's history. Isaiah, whose name means Yahweh's salvation or the salvation of God, was sent by God on a 40-year mission with a message to warn the people of Judah that because of the years of their blatant disobedience and because of their social and religious practices that offended God, they would be overtaken by the Assyrians, taken from the promised land, and then led into exile. Now, what we have here in Isaiah chapter 50 is God now coming to his defense. And the reason this is the case is because these newly exiled Israelites have come to believe that their exile is from the motherland. It is permanent. That God, for whatever the reason they believed, has turned his back on them or they that he has completely dissolved the relationship that he once had with them. In other words, in Israel's minds, they had been divorced by God. And as I alluded to earlier, divorce, for whatever the reason, can be extremely emotionally debilitating. And as we see, we just learned here in the Hebrew culture, the husband could divorce his wife simply because he no longer found her pleasing in his eyes. And that could mean a whole host of things. He could give her a certificate of divorce if she had been unfaithful, and we understand that way. But he could also give her a certificate of divorce if he no longer liked the way she looked. You know, he can be out of shape and a big belly, but if she lost her figure and was no longer pleasing to him, he could put her away. Or something I learned while in the seminary years ago, he could put the wife away if she burned his food. Now, some of you don't take that literally today. But he could put her away for just about any and every reason. So here in Isaiah chapter 50, especially in verses 1 to 3, God decides now to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with his people. And the reason for this is, as I shared early in verse 2, is that God, despite Israel's exile, has continued to reach out to them. Please don't miss this. Even though in their minds they feel divorced by God, time and time again, God has continued to reach out to them, but they have been unresponsive. And the reason for being unresponsive is because they feel that because of the exile, God has divorced them. You know, whenever I do premarital counseling, and let me just say this to those of you who are thinking about getting married today, we even have some within our midst today. If you're thinking about getting married, make sure you have real premarital counseling. I don't mean counseling that lasts an hour, a day, or a week. I'm talking about literally months of premarital counseling. Why? Because if you're going to spend your life for the rest of your life with someone, you need to make sure that someone is the right one. Can the church say amen today? But here's one of the things I tell the couples that I'm counseling. One of the biggest challenges you will have in your marriage, well, it will not be intimacy, although that can be. It's not even money. The biggest challenge married couples face today is that of communication. 
And that's what was happening between God and Israel, between God and Judah. They, in their minds, thought that their exile meant that God had divorced them, but all the while, while they're in exile, God is continuing to reach out to them, but they have broke the lines of communication. God is trying to keep the lives, the lines of communication open here, but Israel just isn't having it. So God, as he has done throughout human history, takes the initiative and makes the first move. And he does so here in Isaiah chapter 50, verses 1 to 3, with a series of rhetorical questions. The first of which is this. He says, listen, if I've divorced you, then where, show me, the certificate of divorce. And please don't miss this, because if there was a divorce certificate, remember now, given in the Hebrew culture, then the wife could remarry. So what is God saying here? What is the point he's making? I haven't given you a certificate of divorce, so you are still mine. In spite of your disobedience, in spite of your turning your back on me, you still belong to me. Then the second question, he says, listen, if, and if you think that I've sold you into slavery to pay off my creditors, which was a common practice in those days of a family was in debt, the parents could sell the children off. Again, don't get any ideas to pay off some debt. God is saying, well, then if that's the case, then, 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 then show me the bill of sale. Again, God is making the point that there is no bill of sale. God is making the point to Judah, although you are in exile, you are still mine. Please stay with me today. So the obvious question I believe in their minds had to be, if that is the case then, then why are we here? How did we end up here? It's a question that I'm sure that many of us have asked over the years as we found ourselves in situations where we felt as though God has divorced us. But the answer that God gives for their predicament is a hard pill for them to swallow. At the end of verse 1, remember what it says? He said, for your transgressions, you have been put away. Please don't miss this. God isn't saying to them that I've divorced you and that's why you're in exile. In essence, he's saying to them, the reason why you are in exile is because of your blatant disobedience and disregard for me and my law. Israel's present situation, however painful, was because, please don't miss this. It was because of their own doing, because of their own sins. Listen, sometimes, not always, not always, but sometimes individuals, sometimes families, yes, sometimes even a nation can find itself in a mess, not because God has divorced them, but because we they have divorced him. And Israel had to take ownership of this. And saints, so do we as a church, so do we as families, so do we as a nation. We have to take ownership of our sins. And sometimes because we've turned our backs on God. God has had to discipline us as individuals. There have been times God has had to, to discipline us as a church. There are times that God has had to discipline us as a society. And yes, there are times that God has had to discipline us and will have to discipline us as a nation. You know, I love how in verses 2 or 3 of Isaiah 50, God reminds Israel of his power to redeem them if they would only respond to his call. Let's take a look at it again, Isaiah 50, verses 2 to verse 3. Look at what it says here. He says, why, when I came, was there no man? In other words, I came 
calling and no one responded to my pleas. Why when I call where well, there's no one to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? In other words, are you not responding to me because you don't think I have the power to redeem? And I love the next few things that God says. He begins to remind them of past times when he delivered them. Look at what it says. Or have I have no power to deliver? Indeed, with my rebuke, I dry up the Red Sea, making reference to the Red Sea here. I made the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stink because there is no water and die of thirst. Verse 3, I clothed the heavens with blackness and made the sackcloth their covering. Many theologians believe that he was talking about the darkness that fell over the land in Egypt during the plagues. In other words, God is saying to them, listen, the problem is not I can't redeem you. I have already redeemed you. I redeemed you for 400 years of slavery. I turned them sea and made it dry land so that you could walk through it. That's not the problem. The problem never was, nor will it ever be, my ability to redeem you. God is saying the problem here then lies with you. Because your unrelenting, disobedient, and destructive ways of a people. You see, instead of Judah placing their faith in God to protect them from the Assyrians, they looked to other nations to do that. And even though their current captivity is a result of their own doing, please don't miss this. Miss this. God still promises to redeem them if they would only begin to place their trust back in him. You know we have the words in God we trust on our currency, but do we really trust God? Let me pause to say this. You know, sometimes it's easy during some of the most difficult and trying times in our lives, especially those not by our own hand, not by our own doing, but by the hand of someone else, or just because of, of sinful circumstances in our world today, it's hard for us to not think that God has divorced us. But it is during those times in our lives when it has not been the result of our own hand, and even if it has been the result of our own hand, that God expects us to continue to place our faith and trust in him as never before. It is in the darkest times that you and I are to exercise our faith. Look at what it says in James chapter 1, verses 2 to verse 4. My brethren, count it all joy. And that's not gladness. That joy means the settled assurance that God has every aspect of my life and your life in his capable hands. My brethren, count it all joy with confidence when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith, what does it do? It produces patience. Some translations say endurance. Look at verse 4. But let patience have its perfect work. In other words, let the process of building and testing your faith go through to its completion that you may be perfect and complete, he says here, lacking what? Lacking, lacking nothing. You know, we all at times ask for greater faith. How many of us have asked God, strengthen my faith? But then God places us in a situation where we have to exercise our faith to strengthen it. And immediately when God does that, the first thing we do is go, God, why did you allow this to happen to me. Don't you love me? And God goes, didn't you ask me to help you to strengthen your faith? How do you think faith is strengthened? 
Faith is strengthened just like our muscles, whether they be our physical muscles or mental muscles, when they are put to the test. Oh, I wish I could just get into shape by staying in the bed all day. But that's not going to happen. Today, because of COVID, you see people running like never before. You see people exercising like never before, not in gyms for the most part, but at home or in the neighborhood. Everybody's exercising because everybody wants to get into shape. Well, that's how our faith is built as well. God allows us to go through some very difficult and trying times so that our faith can be strengthened. Why? So because when the next thing comes up, comes our way, and it will, we will have the strength to endure it. You know, I found a quotation in the book, Great Controversy, by Ellen White, page 21. Look at this quote, 621. Powerful, powerful quote. This is one you need to take a screenshot of. This is one you need to put on social media. This is one that needs to go viral today. Look at what it says. God's love for his children, listen, during the period of their severest trial is as strong and tender as in the days of their sunniest prosperity. Just leave that there for a moment. I want you to get an opportunity to take a picture of that. If I had my phone with me, I would do it. Look at what it says, that God's love for you, for me, during the period of our severest trial is as strong and tender as in the days of their sunniest prosperity. In other words, when you and I are going through difficulties in our lives, it's not because God loves us any less. Sometimes, yes, it's because of our disobedience. Other times, it's simply because we live in this sin-sick world. But whatever the case, whatever the situation, God has not divorced us. Even if we've turned our back on him, God is still the hound of heaven coming after us relentlessly because he wants to redeem us. You know, people have asked me, Pastor, do you think the situation our land is in right now is because of our disobedience. And my answer to them is, you know, I'm not, I'm not Isaiah. I'm not, I'm not a prophet like that. God hasn't given me that revelation. But here's the thing I've learned during this time of confinement and dealing with this pandemic. Regardless of why we are here, God is with us. God has not divorced us. He has not given us a certificate of divorce. He has not put us away. Even though it may feel like it, he has not sold us into slavery to pay off some debt. God's love for us is still as strong today as it was in the most sunny times in our All God wants as we continue to go through this dark period is for you and for me to trust him as never before. Did you hear what I said? God wants us to trust him as never before. That's why I say each week, this experience, my prayer, is that we will become better that we will become stronger, and that we will become wiser. And one of the ways in which I want us to become stronger, including myself, I want my faith to be stronger than it's ever been. But my faith cannot become strong if it's never put to the test. And now is a testing time for the people of God to hold on to him, not to cut off the communication as Judah did, thinking, that they're in exile because God has divorced them. God has not divorced you. There's no certificate of divorce. There's no bill of sale to show us that we've been sold into slavery. During this dark period, God is simply saying, I am there. I am with you. I am a faithful God. 
All I ask is that you continue to trust me and to put your faith in me. Who says amen to that today? That's all God wanted for Judah. That's all that God wants for his people today. Yes, these are difficult and trying times. Yes, we're in the midst of a pandemic. Yes, it feels as though we've been exiled, doesn't it? But God is ready, willing, and able to redeem. All he asks is that we continue to put our faith and trust in him. Let's pray. Father God, we can relate to Israel here. We can relate to their feelings. It resonates with us. We too at times feel as though you have divorced us, that you have written a certificate of divorce, sold us off because of the situation that we're currently dealing with. But God, your word has reminded us once again that your redemptive power is just as strong as it's always been and that you stand ready and willing and able to redeem. All you ask is for us to stay faithful, to stay strong, to trust your word, even, even in the midst of being exiled. May we continue to put our faith and trust in you. Father, I'm praying for that man, for that woman, for that boy, that girl today whose faith is wavering. May they continue to look to your promises because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And as their faith is tested, may they not try to give up, but may they hold on all the more and allow these trials, these challenges to have its complete and perfect work in the development of our faith in you. For we know that you are pleased when we are faithful. Father, I pray today that your word will be like a seed that has been planted in our hearts. My prayer is that it will take root and that ultimately it will bear the fruit of your righteousness. And in this case, the fruit of our faithfulness. Now keep us, Lord, because we cannot keep ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all God's people say, amen, amen. Again, we are so pleased that you decided to worship with us here at Sligo today, even though it's virtually. We're still glad to have you here. We're also glad for those of you who have continued during this time of confinement and pandemic to invest in the expansion of God's kingdom in our church, on our campus, in our community, and throughout the world through the faithful returning of your tithes and of your offerings. And again, as we say each and every week, if you would like to help us expand God's kingdom, we we're doing a great deal of that now virtually online through YouTube and Vimeo and other means. You can go to our website at sligochurch.org, click on the give icon and just fill in the information. It is simple, it is safe, or you can mail it into the address on our website as well, sligochurch.org. Or if you live locally here and you just want to drive by the church and drop it in the mail slot in the church office, you're more than welcome to do that as well. But however you choose to give, let me just say thank you in advance for what you will do and, and thanking you for what you've already done in the past. And if you're worshiping online with us today and you feel impressed that you want to go further in your walk and your relationship with Jesus Christ and, and become a disciple of his, please reach out to us at sligochurch.org. Click on the contact button, fill in your information, and one of our pastors and leaders will get in touch with you as soon as possible. Some of you may even be ready for baptism. You're saying, Pastor, during this COVID, I've been ready for baptism, but no one has asked me. If you want to be baptized, just reach out to us, 
and let us know, and we'd be glad to help facilitate that as well. But as I say each and every week, and I've been saying this for some four months now, believe it or not, we will get through this. Trust me, we will. But as I say each week, when we get to the other side, my prayer is that you and I will be a people that is better, a people that is stronger, yes, and a people that is wiser. So stay strong, stay committed, stay faithful, and the God of heaven will see us through. God bless you.